<laughs> Sorry about that, Trent. All right, Matt, I think you have one more. Yes, sir. This is also a resigning request, but not an annexation. This is a request by Lawrence Thomas. Where is own property located at 1611 North Patterson, consists of 0.4 acres, currently zoned R10, requesting to rezone to OP for office professional. Our property is in the local historic district, also the Berkeley North National Register District. Um, is currently used as a single family residence, although I think it's empty at the moment. The applicant purchased the property, I think, about a year ago. They've gone through extensive renovations of the home. Um, and they're now wanting to have the possibility of marketing it as an office, uh, professional office use, uh, which, as you know, changes from residential use to non-residential. It'll trigger uh, need for a parking lot in the back, and there's already been some discussions about that. The only pattern in the area is somewhat mixed. A uh, major feature of note is in the lower left corner, that is the BSU main campus. This is diagonally across from the intersection of North Patterson and George Avenue. Um, R10 and R6 um, zoning dominate most of everything on the east side of Patterson. However, the land use pattern there does not always match that. Um, for example, the OP property immediately to the south, that's the United Way offices. Um, south of there in R10 zoning is another professional office. It's been there many, many years. Um, I think that's the Valenti Accounting Office. Um, a brief history on that. Under and Howard office out in R10. Back in the 1980s, the Valdosta Zoning Ordinance allowed a professional office used by special exception in R10. Um, not that that was a particularly good idea, which it has been in the code for about 30 years. But that tells you how long that other office had been there. And there's a few other anomalies like that around town. Um, and then southward from there, you get a lot of BSU owned properties, which Zoning is irrelevant for them, they are exempt. And then finally, um, the Episcopal Church for the South, which has a lot of frontage. So it's a little bit deceiving with the uh, residential zoning pattern compared to the land use pattern. If you look northward, you see more of RP um, pattern that is mixed, even some OP properties, including RP right across the street, which is another professional office building. Character area reflects a similar kind of thing. This is Institutional Activity Center that's affiliated with BSU and its immediate surroundings. And then the transitional neighborhood pattern going northward of Patterson. Aerial image, um, rooftops of the historic buildings, um, survey that's in your package of existing conditions, the house, and a gravel parking area that's behind, um, the site sketch of what is proposed, and the gravel parking area behind would become a paid parking lot. <coughs> with about 10 or 11 parking spaces. And then part of what we talked about at the work session, all they have room for next to the south end of their house is a one-way drive, uh, part of the driveway, with an exit onto an alley. Um, to make this function as a real parking lot, they'll need two-way access. And the way to do that is to combine forces with the United Way, which is in a similar situation. They are grandfathered in, this property is not. Um, but together, the two have plenty of room for a good two-way driveway and the shared parking lot behind. Um, if you think about a half mile or so to the south in the North Patterson District, we have some of the old, they turn the century houses that have been converted to law offices like Blank of Alden and some of the others. They each have different driveways coming off Patterson that um, connect into an interconnected parking lot. So a little smaller scale here, but a similar concept, I think, would work very well for both of these properties. So those discussions have already started. But if, if they want to convert the property over to offices, that's one of the things that would be triggered. The OP zoning does not require it. Single-family residence is still allowed in OP. All right, some photographs. Subject property and is recently renovated. Very nice job of it from North Patterson. As you look down the narrow one-lane driveway to the east and to the rear of the site, here is the gravel and mixed paved area. And when the back of the property, the exit onto the alleyway. And then some adjacent properties. This is the United Way building to the south, also a historic structure. Um, the southward view, this is the intersection of Patterson and Georgia, and the VSU campus straight beyond. Northward up Patterson. I wonder if you notice anything interesting about these two pictures. 
taken a moment apart from each other. Not one vehicle on Patterson Street at this point in time. I count that as a miracle, particularly in an afternoon. This to see if that would have been a good time to fix some of those potholes. Uh, it would have been. Um, I noticed that when I was standing and taking the pictures, and I thought, where did everybody go? Professional office across the street, uh, property to the north. It looks like there's a vacant lot, but it's actually the side yard to that house, which is in the old Strickland house. That's the half a block up to the north. So with that, it's a rezoning request. Staff has found it consistent with the comprehensive plan and is for exercise of zoning power. Those responses are there in your packet. And we are recommending approval. And I thought the applicant was here, but <laughs> thank you. If you have any questions you may have. Any questions for Matt on this case, Commissioner? I have a somewhat related question. Is the institutional activity center is that going to contract in based on ZSU selling off some of those properties? Probably not unless the campus boundaries were to contract. Okay. So this is designed to be the main campus and then a rim area around the main campus. So it goes up to one block up to Moore Street and then it hits the properties directly across Patterson. Um, it allows the possibility of RP or OP zones if this were established residential, they would not be eligible to even ask for this. Transitional neighborhood, by the way, also allows for those zones as well. And so that's why we have a mixture up and down the Patterson Corridor. But no, Institutional Activity Center, we have just a few of those. The main ones are around BSU and the South North Medical Center. Any other questions? Mr. Matt, you say uh, in this request that it should be noted that in order to convert this project to an office, um, that it's up to them if they want well, to convert the use or not. That's the option. Yeah. Correct. OP, like I said, does not require a change of use. It, it was renovated as a house. It's been used most recently <laughs> as a house. Even with OP zoning, it could still be a house. Um, home businesses, you know, with special approvals, those kinds of things. To go into a regular office or building, it needs about 10 or so parking spaces based on the floor area of the building. The only way to, uh, place to put them is in the backyard. It's required parking, therefore, it's got to be a hard surface. Um, it gets into an issue whether it be concrete or asphalt. The changes to the site have not been approved yet by the Historic Preservation Commission. The renovations to the building have. Um, for residential use, it's fine, but when it gets into a regular paid parking, general rule of thumb from HPC is asphalt instead of concrete, just because of historic context, that becomes a negotiable. Mm -hmm. um, but fire department is going to require a hard surface, so in case they've got to get a vehicle up in there and hold the weight. Um, the general rule for parking is the minimum required has to be hard surface, handicap has to be hard surface. Overflow parking becomes optional, but then that's the discretion of city engineer. Here we're only talking just a few parking spaces. Um, the gravel is probably most of their base material anyway, so they're probably there anyway. That's interesting. We throw the fire department back in there again. There ain't no way that truck's gonna get up that approach to start with. No, but that's why it has to be doubled in size. Yeah, okay. two-way traffic. Um, they were pretty adamant about it. Um, the pictures in here is the view looking up the driveway. If you look to the right, there's like a, a tree line. And on the right side of it, you can see it immediately right is a one-lane drive for that United Way uses. And they're relegated to one way in, and they're supposed to exit out through the alley. I'm not convinced that that's done consistently. But that's how they're set up. They've been there so long it's grandfathered in. For two-way access, it needs to be you know, 20, 22 feet of pavement. Um, both of these properties have the same problem. But if we put a center driveway along the property line, property line running down the middle of it, and then share the parking in the back, um, there's some economies of scale there, and it would serve both properties. Kind of like what we have down where the law offices are on the further south. So they have 
you know, small driveways off the front and, and a nice parking area in the back. And an alley to exit on if they want. And here they have the option to, with traffic, they can exit back to Patterson. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. More and more questions. Okay. Do, does any of our ordinance have a maximum amount of non permeable surface? A maximum of impervious? The only thing that limits is landscaping rules and stormwater rules um, and impervious surface cover. So an OP by zoning code, the maximum is 70% of impervious, whether it be pavement or rooftop, which we're a long ways from meeting that here at Playbird. Um, but the more pavement or rooftop, the more stormwater you've got to provide and the more landscaping you've got to provide. So those sort of limit the fact. Um, about 14, 15 years ago in the zoning regs, we used to have a maximum parking requirement. You couldn't go beyond a certain percentage, in fact, I think it was 125% <coughs> um, that was built in there. We determined that to be unnecessary, that other factors limit it, so we don't need to put an arbitrary number on there. Particularly if you have the room for extra parking and you really need the extra parking, it allows you to do that without getting a variance. I'll give you a good example. A restaurant with good food um, needs more than the minimum required parking, and sometimes a whole lot more. And if you don't have good food, you don't even need your minimum. <laughs> that is true. So, you know, you that in advance. Uh, and don't in advance. Oh, okay. So, it becomes a reality later that we burn with. Okay. But we literally had some proposed developments that wanted to go beyond our maximum cap and had good reason why, but they had to go through a variance process in order to do that, we call that facility. All right, any other questions for staff on this case? Then I will open the public hearing portion on this matter. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of case VA 202410? Seeing no one. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case? If so, please come forward. See no one that will close the public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any further questions? I can't imagine that, but any others? <laughs> then I will seek a motion on this matter. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. On VA 2024-10, I make a motion that we recommend approval based on staff's recommendations. Thank you, Commissioner Rancher. We have a motion for approval by Commissioner Rancher. Is there a second? So the second by Commissioner Watts. All those in favor? I think that's unanimous. Uh, well, train. All right. Um, 